Hello everybody and I'd like to welcome you to a Kano analysis session. In this session I'll be going over the Kano analysis and showing how it fits into product design or product ownership if you're coming from an agile software development methodology. So the Kano analysis is to look at product features and in this example I'll be going through a smartphone example and listing out the product features of the smartphone. What this model helps us to do is to differentiate these product features based on the amount of satisfaction or delight that they'll bring to the customers versus the amount of dissatisfaction if we don't have these, these features in our product set. The analysis is broken down as follows. We will map our product features into this diagram. So I've created a couple axes here. Uh, this axis, I was just mentioning, is our satisfaction level from being very satisfied to not being satisfied. And the other axis is if we decide to not implement the feature versus fully implementing the feature. Now what we'll find with the diagram is the features will fall within certain segments of this diagram. So in this segment here, where we go, the understanding here is that we may have a feature that's not implemented and doesn't provide a lot of satisfaction. In this case, our customers are just not interested in that particular thing. However, we might find that as we implement a specific feature that we gain satisfaction for that feature. Now on the flip side, we'll draw another line here where we have a dissatisfaction that may occur if we don't have a fully implemented feature and these could be potential regulation requirements that we need to have in the item or that it is such uh, a basic thing that we need to have in the item that it has to be fully implemented. So if we think about a smartphone not having a touch screen in this day and age then that can create a lot of dissatisfaction towards the, the users that are using the device unless we come up with a new way to delight the users for working with the interface that can offset not having the touch screen. Uh, for example, Google Glass, if you can use your eye to actually do the input, then you may be able to balance out not having that other feature that is now a commonplace in smartphone technology these days. So the first step in our Kano analysis is to go through a brainstorming technique or an ideation uh, technique to create the ideas or the features that we will be implementing in our product. So what I've done is I have went ahead and did some brainstorming myself by reverse engineering a device that I have. I just looked at a smartphone and broke it down into the features that it's offering. And I put up some other things as well. For instance, a physical keypad, a VR viewing device. I brought up an idea of a car starter a microphone, camera, security and encryption typical to the Blackberry device that we used to see in the market, uh, a stylus, so if you want to use a pen then that's an option, uh, edge screen for the, the Galaxy Edge systems that are out now. Physical, external headphones, microphone jack, built-in storage, GPS location, wireless connectivity, 
And we'll just continue on here. External storage, Bluetooth, a battery life in terms of 24 hours, and a screen size being at least five inches. So this is a feature set that I've come up with and when you're facilitating these sessions, a part of your brainstorm is you want to come up with as many features as possible. Then this Kano analysis will help us differentiate those features and determine which ones may provide more satisfaction for a customer base, which ones may provide dissatisfaction. Now we may not have all the answers, and that's one of the big proponents that I like to always provide in my videos is the whole point of using these techniques is to help elicit better knowns than what we used to not know. So let's, for example, is if wireless connectivity was very important, then we can take a look at surveys. So if you have a customer support desk, and the customers are always asking about when would we have wireless connectivity for our device, then that can be funneled into the decision makers that are deciding which features go into the product so that they get placed into the schedule to be built. If it's not there, then your sales team can potentially say, I lost this sale because I didn't have the wireless connectivity or I had to issue a refund because wireless connectivity wasn't there. This is data that we could bring into the product design phase and determine that if, this, if these things are having an impact on sales or they're creating support afterwards, then we can prioritize them effectively. So for this part of the video, I'd like to go through the feature set that we've identified and map them into the Kano analysis. So let's start with something that is pretty obvious. Smartphones nowadays, if they don't have a camera, then we can expect a, a large level of dissatisfaction from our users. Because now smartphones have both a front-facing camera and a back-facing camera. There's even two cameras in the smartphone. Back in my day when the smartphones first started, they didn't have the front-facing camera for the selfie shots. So if we don't have a camera, this is the area of the Kano diagram where if we don't have a specific item, it's going to create a level of dissatisfaction. So if the camera is not fully implemented, then it's going to create you know, a large amount of dissatisfaction. So what we're doing here is we're signifying that we need this item to be built into the product. Now there are levels of differentiation. So what I'll do is I'll draw a blue line that cuts basically proportionally through this graph. In this blue line, we can consider something like a feature performance. Kind of, it's on the, the more is better. If I have more of this, it's good. For instance, the camera, I could potentially move the camera out of here like when I, what we're assuming here is that this is just a basic camera functionality now if I were to change this camera to be maybe it's a 360 camera that can be something that's pretty interesting given that the 360 camera at this time of recording is quite new and we're seeing some users uploading to YouTube with 360 camera shots and they're creating some interesting content. Though it is a little bit kludgy to navigate through that content. So it requires users to rewind in the video to look around. So if they get multiple rewinds in the video that actually increases watch time which is a good thing for YouTube users. So that's where you'll see potentially a 360 camera. And if I were to do this, I'm going to change this and from the conversation that we're having now, we realize, okay, we know that we have to have a camera. But if we were now to make it the camera set that we need to have, we're going to assume, and I'll write it down here, front and back camera. When I put something down in this quadrant, it means I have to build it or else I'll create a lot of dissatisfaction. 
But this 360 camera, then we can survey, okay, well, how much of a satisfaction will it create for the users of our device? And let's assume that we realize that it's not going to be the ultimate level of satisfaction, but it could be enough that, well, how can I build this into a smartphone and then push that over to the technology team to come up with some solutions on how to make a smartphone able to take 360 degree video. So let's continue with some basic items as well. Microphone. We would assume we need a built-in microphone because this device is a phone. So let's place that down into this area where it needs to be fully implemented or it will create dissatisfaction. Uh, another example is let's move into something like Bluetooth. Now Bluetooth, would we, would our customers be upset if we did not have Bluetooth? I would say yes, that's something that is quite common now. Uh, and we have, well, let's, let's try to quantify it as well, how much dissatisfaction would happen if it's not fully implemented. Let's just say that there will be some dissatisfaction for it. I think a lot of people can get away with Bluetooth, but there are more and more devices now, like the, the headsets or the activity trackers that use the Bluetooth technology. Stylus support. So something that's typical of Samsung devices, they have a stylus where you can tap on the phone. Let's just say that, and to bring up a point here, in the middle of our diagram, if I hash this out here, this is an area of indifference. So what that means is if we implement it, then our customer base would be kind of 50-50 as to whether they care or not about that specific feature. So a stylus on the Galaxy Note, what you'll find is maybe some people just don't use it. I personally liked it for my Galaxy. Others like it that they like to draw and do sketching. Others like to write notes, actual, like they're using a sticky note that you see here and they can actually write notes on it. But then you have a group of customers that don't care about it at all. So this is something that we would mark as indifferent given this analysis, though no, your analysis may be different. Let's move on to physical keypad, something that was typical of a BlackBerry device back when BlackBerry was uh, in its heyday. And we could say that, well, really, is it indifferent? Well, it, it's fallen so back on the track that really, if it's not implemented, we could say that, let's put it at this level here. If it's not implemented, it's still going to cause a like a large level of indifference. It's not that it's a stylus. It's far back that we don't even need to do it. So we, we may even say that if I put it up here, what I'm saying is that the customer's still delighted even if we haven't implemented. So what this really says is don't do these. So if you're a product manager or a product owner, and you have somebody pushing hard for a physical keypad, but you're finding that out of surveying your customers or even implementing a prototype that they don't care about it, then that's your basis for saying, I don't need to implement this. We're not going to waste the money because there might be other things that we can try that will bring a delight to the customer and help us differentiate our product from the other ones out in the market. So built-in storage for apps, we would say that's something that we have to have. Physical external microphone jack, this is something that's interesting based on the MacBook that's come out and they're now changing the way we think about things. Not specifically on this from what I understand, but if I don't have this and I have to use Bluetooth or some other technology, and still that's not as I found particularly stable. I like to plug in because then I know I have, I'm going to be 100% connected. I'm going to be able to use the device. So let's just say that it's still 
within the realms here that's something that does create delight and satisfaction if I didn't have it implemented it's not going to create uh, an absolute loss of the customer base but this is where the analysis comes in where you have to talk to your customer base and get their opinion on it don't just take my opinion on this wireless connectivity we say that's something basic as well we need to have that in our product battery life being about 24 hours now this this is something that that's changing I've seen other smartphones coming out now that they're not saying that they, we can get 24 hours out of the the heavy usage that's coming up well where would we put it on the continuum I would say well 24 hours to, at most part I'm making an assumption here again assumptions and this would have to we'd have to ask the question is is 24 hours good enough to create a level of indifference does 24 hours delight or is 24 hours so far back that maybe we should look at increasing battery life so if we assume that for our particular device that the battery life came down here what we're saying is we should improve this feature so we can make it more of a delight but this depends on the amount of load that the apps take on our particular device and that could reduce the battery life so a workaround for that are things like the, the battery chargers that people can carry around. I see this a lot now when I watch people with their phones is they have a battery in their pocket and they connect the phone into the battery in the pocket. Moving on to something like here, car starter. Now, does my phone actually need to have a built-in car starter? Let's agree that through our conversations that this is something that can be built as an app. So in this case, we would say, let's throw it up here, that it really if we don't have it, our customers are not going to care much about that. They can go and they can download an app for that piece. External storage, in my experiences, still very important. Uh, we need to have the ability to put external storage into our device. Uh, recently, one of my smartphones broke down. I didn't store the data onto an external SD card that I could pop out. Now, if the main board is dead, then I've lost all the data that I had on the smartphone that wasn't uploaded to any sort of cloud features. So now I just through a you know the school of hard knocks determined that I should have external storage and I've done that with my new device so I now save all my external like my photos and videos onto the external storage so if it breaks down I can pop it out GPS location uh, smartphones are now being used for navigation given the technology for the GPS, uh, Google has a GPS um, system that talks to you while you drive, uh, Waze as well as another app. And let's put this, based on those, let's put that uh, as a must have. There's even other apps that want to know your location so they know what best store to link you up with. If you wanted to just say order a pizza, it knows which pizza shop is closest to you screen size and we're saying here about five inches of screen size let's place that as this one's tricky without doing some analysis to say should we have bigger screens or well, bigger screens mean more bulk but you can do you can watch different things with a larger screen uh, if if they want if you find that your customers want a larger screen then you find that a five inch screen size will fall down here if the customers then decide that, wow, that's, that's really good, you're giving us five inches of screen size, I'd say maybe 10 years ago, this is 2016 when I'm making this video, 10 years ago having a five inch screen size would be like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, and that's something when the first smartphone, Apple smartphones came out. So let's call it an indifferent piece for now. Security encryption, similar to BlackBerry. Not seeing as much call for that these days. 
let's just say that we'll place it down here and the security and encryption can be handled by apps. Virtual reality viewing is something that's coming out uh, and we might say, well, it's not quite there yet. It may create some satisfaction if we have some capability for it. But let's say if we full, so here on this axis here, if we fully implemented this ability, is it going to create a lot of extra satisfaction? Or can I do some half-level implementation? And what we mean by that is and you're seeing the goggles where you can put your phone into some sort of container and then put that up to your face and then the screen will split to give you the virtual reality sensation. That's where we are right now. If our phone can support that, then we'll say that's good enough. So if we wanted to do like a fully implemented somehow that they can put the phone like into like a glass or something like that, that's going to change a lot of these things. And by virtue of putting it this far out, we completely changed the product design. So we have a, an agreement with the team that will just continue to follow on with what is out in the market right now. There's no need to differentiate ourselves that far out. It's going to cost a lot of money. It might impact other features. So we'll just go with it unless you're trying to create that niche product that potentially could be a glass or some other device that creates that virtual reality sensation. Uh, edge screen, this is similar to a Galaxy Note that has, or sorry, not the Galaxy Note, but the Galaxy Edge that's come out by Samsung, where there's a, an edge on the screen, and you can tilt the phone, you can actually see a little bit of the screen out of this edge. Uh, I would need to do some more analysis. I actually have one of these devices, and what I find like this device versus my note device is the edge of the screen allows me to scroll better. So for me, it's it's a bit of a delight. I'll put it over here. It's a fully implemented feature. It's providing me some level of delight, but it's not it, it it's not creating a new paradigm shift that's making me go absolutely wow. So I'm not putting at the high level of delight and satisfaction, at least in my opinion, from my experiences. So thank you for attending this small lecture on using the Kano analysis where I took a feature set and mapped it to this specific Kano analysis. I know there's a lot of room for conversation and discussion on this. If you want to ask questions in the comments below, uh, go ahead. If there's a specific type of product or feature that you want to see, you can. I can definitely go ahead and create uh, a video for that in the future. Uh, this is basically how you use a Kano analysis and how you map things onto the Kano analysis. Where you go from here as your next steps is you look at implementing the items that must be fully implemented and these can build your minimum viable product and then you work on your high level delights or satisfaction uh, impacting features as long as the cost is not prohibitive. And just a little bit before we go is try to find the value of what these features will give you over the cost of implementing. And you get something WSJF, which stands for Weighted Shortest Job First. As long as the risk of this is about the same of doing the implementation, then you'll find that if you do this quotient, then you prioritize based on the highest number that the WSJF gives, or when you divide these out. Thank you, uh, again, my name's Andrew. If you have any questions, link, put them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.